The New York Islanders played a gutsy game and came back to beat the Pittsburgh Penguins 4-3 in a shootout. We have our key takeaways from the game, plus the NHL debut of Isaiah George. All that and more on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to the Wednesday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You could start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Lots to discuss on today's show, but most importantly, a gutsy comeback performance by the New York Islanders. They beat the Pittsburgh Penguins in the shootout by a score of four to three. And while this was not a work of art by any means, when you are down three defensemen and down two of your top three forwards on the top line, you get wins the way the Islanders got wins last night. You play smart for the most part. You never give up. You get a great game from your goalie. And you just keep it simple and execute enough to find a way to win. And that's what the Islanders essentially did. And they did it really well. It would have been very easy for this team down three to one early in the third period to give up. And yet, Less than two minutes after the Penguins took that three to one lead, the Islanders were able to come back and get back in the game and then tie the game and then force overtime and win it in the shootout. And the thing I loved was just the determination that this team showed. They did not quit when they had every opportunity to do so. Yeah, gave up a power play goal, but then the the power play goal they scored by Simon Holmstrom, very important that he got that one. And then J.G. Pajot tying it by sending one to the toy department. Yeah, the puck was kind of rolling. It was on edge, but that's what you do. You take advantage of those situations when you get them. And, you know, in overtime, Got nervous, really got nervous when the uh, Islanders took a penalty. That was a tough one to watch. Uh, Kyle Palmieri called for holding. It was the right call. And then, you know, the Islanders kill off the power play and then get a power play in the last minute 36 of overtime, but couldn't quite uh, convert. And you go to the shootout and Bo Horvat with a really pretty goal one hand on the stick, slides it underneath the pads of Alex Nedeljkovic, and that turned out to be the game winner. 32 saves for Ilya Sorokin. Got to address the first goal of the game. You know, they went to replay, and they ruled that, uh, you know, the, the, the Islanders, they, they challenged the goal, end up losing the challenge after what felt like a 20-minute Almost, I mean, it was probably closer to seven or eight minutes, but it felt like forever delay. I still think that the replay officials got this one wrong, but thankfully at the end of the day, it did not matter. And they, you know, here, here's the thing. When they called it good on the ice, that was most likely the way they were going to go with it because it was so hard to overturn it ended up being whether or not, you know, one of the Penguins players skates was on the ice or lifted off the ice. It, it is so hard to uh, d- to determine. I still think it was the wrong decision, ultimately. But at the same time, uh, you know, you, you, you sort of 
tough to overturn those kind of plays. And when Sidney Crosby is the goal scorer, probably even less likely that they will overturn it. And, you know, that's that's what you get. And I like the fact that this Islanders team found ways to, to hang in there. And, you know, Ilya Sorokin did a really solid job of coming up with saves when he needed to. Was he perfect? No, not even close. But he really did get, you know, make some big saves. Sometimes playing goal is is all about when you make a save, and the Islanders managed to do that. The other thing I like, you know, for the most part, the Islanders stayed out of the penalty box. He had three penalties, one of them in overtime. But look, let's face it, the penalty kill is still not great. And you've got to be able to, to minimize. Look, if you can't improve the penalty kill, at the very least, you, you don't allow too many opportunities. And that's what you get. J.G. Pajot with the, the goal that we mentioned earlier. He and Noah Dobson tied for the team lead with five shots. And it was just really good to see the way the team worked. And, you know, Hudson Fashing, Oliver Wallstrom, Kyle McClain, they didn't see the ice a lot. Uh, Fashing only out there for 512. Wallstrom, 722. McClain, 844. Basically, when the Islanders fell behind, Patrick Wash shortened his bench. And, you know, look, between the three of them, Wallstrom was the only one with a shot on goal. And the Islanders, you know, didn't get a lot of shots, but they made the ones that they got count. And that is what you want to see. And, uh, uh, again, just getting the job done. Polak and Mayfield, three block shots each. Uh, you know, the hits, Dobson, Polak, Mayfield, and Siplikov, each with three. Again, was it a work of art? Absolutely not, but it was enough to get the job done. You keep it simple. It was encouraging to see this team go to the net. That is something we need to see more of. And, you know, early on, uh, Siplikov going in front of the net, screening the goalie on that particular play. Did it result in a goal? No, but again, that's what you got to do. You got to go to the net. You got to make those simple plays. You got to screen the goalie. You got to get rebounds. You, you got to shoot the puck when you have the chance to shoot the puck. When you're struggling, you go back to basics. That's what the Islanders were able to do. And they were successful at it. And, you know, again, it's going to be a struggle, okay? Bottom line, it is going to be a struggle for this Islanders team to win hockey games while you're missing three of your top six defensemen and two of your three first-line players. I can sugarcoat it all I want. It's going to be tough. And... I don't, you know, if you could go 500, NHL 500 for the next month and stick around and then start getting your guys back and getting, you know, Anthony Duclair back and, and Matthew Barzal back and, and, you know, one by one, you got to hope these guys start to come back. That's when you start to, you know, you hang around until then. And then you go out there and you get the job done by starting to put together some wins. And hopefully that is what we're going to see. So a big two points. Yeah, you gave up a point to the Pittsburgh Penguins. But you know what? The Islanders now pass the Penguins in the standings because both teams have 12 points. But the Penguins have played another game, an extra game. They pass Columbus. Every little point counts when you're in the situation the Islanders are in right now. You you close ranks, you work harder, you make the little simple plays, you keep it simple, you put the puck on net, you go to the net, you play 
basic defense. You you don't try to be fancy. You just try to be efficient and smart. And you get some really solid goaltending. And that could be enough to start winning hockey games. It was enough for the New York Islanders. And they end up with two big points in this division game. Not going to be easy. The schedule doesn't get any easier. Uh, you know, you, you you head out on the road now for a one game. Then you head back home against Ottawa. You're home for the Devils. And then you got a five-game road trip uh, after that where you're visiting Edmonton, Vancouver, Seattle, Calgary, and Detroit. That is not going to be easy, but at least the Islanders get, get me to 500. Get me in those next seven games that I outlaw, outlined, get me seven points. I think that would be fantastic for the Islanders if they could do that, hang around, get healthy, and then hope to do better. We have got a lot more to discuss. One of the Islanders' top prospects, Isaiah George, made his NHL debut in this game. We'll talk about the way he played. We'll have our hero and goat of the game and a lot more. We'll also have our farm report on all things Bridgeport Islanders. And for our Islanders' birthday of the day, a checking forward who finished his career uh, or or just about finished his career. He played two games with the Blues after leaving the Islanders. He was with the Isles for one season in the early 2000 teens. Let's see if you can guess who this Waltham, Massachusetts native uh, is. We've got that and a lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at Prize Picks. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. Join over 10 million users and sign up today. Prize Picks puts their members first, so all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. And when my picks hit, I can get my money in as quick as 15 minutes. So sign up today. You'll get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It is guaranteed. So download the app. Use code LOCKEDONNHL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Download the app and use code LOCKEDONNHL. $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. It's all there on Prize Picks. Prize Picks. Run your game. So, look, you know me. I, I like to try to call it straight. If I see something I like, I'm going to say I like it. If I see something I disagree with, I'm going to call that out. I give credit to Lou Lamorello for making the decision to call up Isaiah George who made his NHL debut last night against the Pittsburgh Penguins. And why? Because Isaiah George is a young player, a prospect with upside. Do I anticipate Isaiah George remaining with the big club for the rest of the season? It's too early for me to say that. But at the very least, not only did he play, he played a solid game. And he earned enough ice time. I said before the game on X, I wanted him to play at least 14 minutes in this game. Again, assuming he doesn't look like he's in over his head. Well, George did not look in over his head. He did not figure in the scoring. He was even in plus minus. He did not have any hits. He didn't have any block shots. He did register one shot on goal. But after only playing, uh, what, like two minutes in the first period, he finished the game with 15 minutes and 41 seconds of ice time. They even had him out there at times with Noah Dobson, which for the life of me, I don't think was the wisest choice. But 
you know what? Isaiah George did not look out of place. Did he look nervous a little bit at times? Yeah. Did he make a few mistakes over the course of the game? Yeah. And you got to expect that from a rookie, especially when you're out there playing against Evgeny Malkin and Sidney Crosby, and it's your NHL debut. I, I, I expected that, you know, a little nerves, that's only human, that's normal. But overall, Isaiah George showed he's capable of playing in the NHL without significantly costing the Islanders. Grant Hutton stepped in, played 1644. He looked solid. The, the, the guy who was barely out there, Dennis Chalowski, only eight minutes of ice time. He was a minus one, but again, overall, for Isaiah George, a solid, not spectacular, but solid NHL debut. And that's what you want to see. That the moment was not too big for him. He was not overwhelmed. He made some good passes. He made some good plays. And this is something that he can build on. Will he probably be sent back to Bridgeport as soon as, you know, Alexander Romanov and Mike Riley are ready to return to the lineup? Probably. When will that be? We don't know. But right now, a solid performance by Isaiah George. And at least we saw two things happen that I really was hoping to see and still hope to see more of. Lou Lamorello called up one of the young prospects. And he did not get benched and only play five, six minutes in the game. And he didn't get pulled after one mistake. Yeah, they started him slowly, but Isaiah George settled down and played well enough for the New York Islanders. Hero and go to the game. Uh, you know, you could go Sorokin. He certainly played well. You could talk about the, the winning goal in the shootout by Bo Horvat. But I have to go Kyle Palmieri. Palms continues to play well. That second line continues to be the Islanders' most consistent and productive offensive line. Uh, you know, J.G. Pajot had the tying goal. He won 10 out of 12 faceoffs. Those are definite positives. But for Kyle Palmieri, it's a goal and an assist. Uh, three shots on goal, one hit, one block shot. And yeah, I, I just give him credit. 20 minutes, 53 seconds of ice time. He is going to be my hero of the game. And the go to the game, I, I guess I'd still go with the penalty kill, which did come up big in overtime, but they've got to be more consistent and got to be better. Uh, but again, you know, when Sorokin steps up the way he did and the team showed some, some never say die attitude. I can put up with uh, some of the shortcomings of the game. And I want to see more. I want to see, uh, you know, I want to see some opportunities for some of the guys down in Bridgeport right now who are playing well, who earn the opportunity to come up and, and, and play. So if it's Alex Jeffries, if it's Frederick Karlstrom, uh, Brian Pino is playing well, although I don't think he's a prospect per se right now. But, you know, guys who are earning the right to come up, I want to see them get that opportunity. And hopefully, once they get here, not just play five minutes in a game, but really get a chance to show what they could do. Because you know what? Here's the difference. You could play it safe. You could call up your, you know, Gautiers and your foodies and, and, and guys who have played in the NHL before and played okay, but they're fringe NHL guys. Or you can bring up guys with a little more offensive skill. And, you know, your third and fourth lines are already struggling to score, period. 
adding more guys who fit in on that third or fourth line to try to fill the gap by, you know, the fact that you don't have your two of your top three, you know, top line forwards, that's not as good an idea, in my opinion, as trying to get guys with a little more offensive natural ability who maybe lack experience. Give them a shot. They can't do any worse than the guys, the Julian Gauthier's, the the Liam Foodies, the, you know, Hudson Fashings. As far as offensive production is concerned, you got nothing to lose and maybe something to gain. I want to see more of that as we go forward. All right, more to get to on today's show. We have our weekly farm report on all things Bridgeport Islanders. A little more good news down on the farm, so we'll talk about that. We'll have that. We'll have our Islanders birthday of the day, all that and more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more all on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. And Islander fans, check out the odds for the Islanders' upcoming game in Ottawa on Thursday. Use your knowledge of the Islanders to maximize your bets on FanDuel. So again, visit FanDuel.com. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the National Football League. Thank you for making Locked On Islanders your first listen today. For your second listen, find Locked On Fantasy Hockey. You can become a fantasy hockey expert and get the edge over your league mates with daily tips from Steel and Flip. Find the Locked On Fantasy Hockey podcast on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Time for our weekly farm report. We do it every Wednesday during the season. We talk about all things Bridgeport Islanders, and the Islanders played a pair of games this past week. Back on uh, last Wednesday night, October 30th, the Islanders faced the uh, Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins, and they end up losing the game in a shootout by a score of 4-3. to three. Brian Pino scored for the fourth straight game. He also has three shorthanded goals, ended the game with a goal and an assist. Samuel Bolduc and Frederick Karlstrom each scored, but in the end, uh, wasn't enough, and in the shootout, the Penguins win. So the Islanders get a point. 38 saves, by the way, for Marcus Hogberg. Couldn't have been an easy game. He faced a lot of shots, but he was able to help the Islanders steal a point. And then on Friday night, the Islanders go out and face the Springfield Thunderbirds and Brian Pino. A fifth straight game with at least a goal. The Islanders down the Thunderbirds by a 4-1 to margin. And uh, this is now the five games in a row. It is the longest uh, streak of Pino's career. And it is the longest streak in the AHL so far. Now, Isaiah George got his first professional goal. Alex Jeffries and Chris Terry, each with multiple point games. Frederick Karlstrom also scored his fifth goal in the last six games. Jakob Skerek, 23 saves to earn the win. First road win for Bridgeport this year, and it was great to see. So three out of a possible four points in the last week for Bridgeport. Right now, Brian Pino, six goals, nine points. That leads the team. Chris Terry, One goal and nine points. Alex Jeffries, eight points in eight games. That's three goals and five assists. 
And Frederick Karlstrom, he's out for the early Cy Young Award. Five goals, no assists. Uh, Samuel Bolduc, a goal and four assists in nine games as well. Again, Matthew Maggio, no goals and three assists in eight games. William Dufour, one goal, one assist in nine games. Those guys just continue to struggle uh, right now. As for the goaltending, Marcus Hogberg, a 389 goals against an 882 save percentage. He's 0 3 and 2. But Jakob Skarek has played pretty darn well. 2 2 and 0, oh, a 916 save percentage and a 2.47. Goals against average. Bridgeport still in last place right now in the Atlantic Division, although they are tied with Springfield and Providence in points. Uh, and, and in fact, Springfield has a lower point percentage because they've played one extra game. So technically, you know, tied for seventh uh, right now, the Bridgeport Islanders at a 2 5 and 2 record. That gives them six points through nine games. This is a busy week ahead right now. Uh, tonight, Wednesday at 10, well, this afternoon, this morning, a 10.35 a.m. start, the Bridgeport Islanders visiting the Springfield Thunderbirds. Then Friday, uh, November 8th, a road game in Providence against the Providence Bruins at 7.05. Saturday, the 9th, a home game against Providence, so there's a home and home. And then next Tuesday, another one of those 10.30 a.m. starts, a home game against the Hershey Bears. <clears throat> so if you want to see some of the Islanders' prospects play now before they reach the island, you could head on up to Bridgeport or you could watch any of these games on AHL TV. But at the very least, some encouraging uh, games lately in Bridgeport, good to see the team picking things up a little bit. Time now for our Islanders' birthday of the day. And this player was only an Islander for part of one season. But uh, today is the 46th birthday of former Islanders forward Keith Acoin, the Waltham Mass native, 5'8", 171 pounds. Spent four seasons at Norwich University in the ECAC. And then made his NHL debut in 2005-2006 with the Carolina Hurricanes, later played for the Capitals, and then joined the Islanders for the 2012-2013 season, played in 41 games for the Isles, six goals, 12 points, four penalty minutes, and was in six playoff games for the Isles with three assists, played two games for the Blues the year after he was on the island, and then finished his career in Switzerland and Germany. Uh, only played 145 career NHL games, 17 goals, 49 points, 22 penalty minutes, add five assists in 20 Stanley Cup playoff games for O'Coin. His better games as an Islander, one of them, January 24th, 2013, Islanders visiting Toronto to take on the Maple Leafs for the Islanders. Evgeny Nabokov, the goalie, while Ben Scrivens gets the start for Toronto. And in this game, the Islanders fall behind 3-1 to one in, after one period. Tie it in the second on goals by Mark Streit and Brad Boys. Take a lead on a goal by Michael Grabner. And then our Islanders' birthday of the day, Keith O'Coin, scores four and a half minutes into the third period. David Olstrom and Colin McDonald with the assist. That increases the Islanders' lead. They go on to win the game by a score of 7-4. to four. But Keith O'Coin, he scored. He had two penalty minutes. He scored the game winner on his only shot on goal. Played for 11 minutes and five seconds. Keith O'Coin, a checking forward who was with the Islanders for most of the 2012-2013 season. He is our Islanders' birthday of the day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Tomorrow on the show, we'll preview Thursday night's game against the Ottawa Senators. Hopefully, we'll have some positive injury news, but we'll certainly have the latest injury news on Alexander Romanov and Mike Riley and any other 
news that uh, you know we may have on the status of various Islanders injured players. Uh, don't forget, if you have a question, a comment, maybe a topic you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, email us at LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever's on your mind. You could follow the show on X at Locked On Isles, and you could follow me, Gil Martin, on X at Ice Wars, NYR, VSNYI. We'll keep you up to date on all things Islanders all year long, and I am live tweeting during nearly every Islanders home and road game. So join me for some instant insight and analysis. Until tomorrow, have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.